to the Eureka Street Crypto Podcast. Good morning, everybody. I'm Eureka John, and you're at Eureka Street Crypto, broadcasting from Leander, Texas. It is August 9th, 2022. This is episode number 484. Um, and I think if you're listening to the audio, it's episode 155, maybe? I don't know. I, I started doing the audio podcast after I flipped on the YouTube switch uh, back on October 24th, 2020. And I did you know, a few hundred episodes <laughs> before I actually just decided to distribute on other platforms. Um, this is my morning crypto brain dump uh, where I talk about all the news and things that I learned in the crypto space and just whatever. Um, and this is my sandbox where I play around with audio visual type of stuff. And um, this is my my message in a bottle to the crypto and Web3 space and to just anybody out there who wants to see what, see what John's doing. And um, that's basically it. And uh, nothing more, nothing less is not sponsored by anybody. And I'm not shilling anything. Um, yeah, I'm just here just uh, honing my skills. That's about it, really. Um, but, you know, I talk to, I've interviewed people. I, I talk about uh, news. I talk about, um, I go deep into projects sometimes. It all really just, I, I sometimes I even read like, you know, the old cyberpunk, cypherpunk history uh, from the Nakamoto Institute and stuff like that. So you never know what I'll be talking about on here. This is kind of like a variety show. Um, but uh, yeah, you know, it's all things uh, crypto and Web3. So um, yeah, anyway, I uh, hope you enjoyed the episode so far. Um, sometimes the sound is terrible on them. Sometimes it's great. Um, it's all just experimentation process. Anyway, let's go over here to the uh, Coin Gecko screen. And I usually start with this Coin Gecko screen. It's been like almost, you know, it's been since july 30th since i've done an episode almost two weeks i guess a week and a half and it's just because i've had a lot of stuff going on i mean i i started doing this every single day for a long time and um you know because the consistency and 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 the yeah i mean half half of doing a good job and half of being successful is just showing up you know and so i was doing this every single day and i got to know other people online and i got myself plugged in dows and started doing other podcasts and projects with other people and doing podcast editing and things like that. And uh, so, yeah, you know, I've been busy. <laughs> so I, I, I haven't really had the time to do my own thing every single morning anymore, but I jump on like this when I can. And it's it's super fun. I love it. You know, it gives me a nice little break. Um, anyway, so let's go to Queen Gecko and see what's going on. Uh, hit the old refresh button. Um, so, you know, things have been kind of going sideways for Bitcoin for a couple of weeks now um right around you know the mid early the low 20s um ethereum has been doing pretty well um up at 17 16 now um so let's see here we you know we got the two stable coins um, up in the top and uh, so stable coin activity has been been yeah pretty high um there's been a lot of interesting developments going on um in the regulatory and government space which i'll get into here in a second I don't really like talking about laws and regulations and governments and all that. Um, but the, one of the reasons that I got into crypto is because of privacy, you know, and because of financial sovereignty and just some of the ideals and the philosophy that crypto bring. I mean, first I got into it because I was broke and I was looking for some way to make money and I heard you could make money off of Bitcoin. But then once I started getting deeper into it, and learning about DeFi and learning about financial autonomy, learning about the surveillance state, you know, it all really starts to click and make sense for me. And, um, you know, I fell in love with the philosophy of it. And, um, well, here I am still doing it and still in love with the philosophy of it. Although some of the practical things, the practical implications of that philosophy um, are still in the very early stages and flawed. And there's a lot of hacks going on. And there's a lot of people running around the Web3 space that don't know what they're doing, including myself, you know. And so <laughs> it's, it's, it's definitely a pioneering space. <clears throat> there's The bubble right now seems to have kind of burst on a lot of the DeFi and the NFT market and all that, um, which is good. You know, it, the bubble burst for the for the uh, original internet, the dot com bubble, you know, back in the day, and that was a healthy, you know, burst back then. It, it just got rid of a lot of the scammers and the grifters in this space. Um, but you know, 
right now crypto is under attack. Um, the U.S. government just uh, oh the crypto is always under attack, but just rendered tornado cash. Um, uh, uh, they just criminalized tornado cash. So let's go take a look over here at tornado cash and see what's happened in the past like you know 24 hours. Uh, down 27.8 percent. Um, so yeah, tornado cash took a major hit, um, but. You know, I'm I'm bullish on and I'm not bullish on tornado. I, I like tornado cash. Tornado cash, what it is, it's a mixing service that allows you to be able to um, put your crypto into tornado cash. It mixes it up, and then you can have it sent to another wallet. And um, the source um, of the crypto of, of the cryptocurrency um, basically is erased. So a lot of people, you know, the, the government says it's been used for laundering cash. You know, it's criminal activity. They, they say that everything is used for criminal activity. Um, that is a powerful tool once it's in the hands of the average person. Um, it's not really used for criminal activity if it's used for, you know, legitimate purposes, in quotes. And so anyway, so let's go to CNBC here, like some mainstream news and see what they have to say about it. Uh, crypto mixing tor crypto mixing service tornado cash blacklisted by Treasury Department for alleged use in laundering. Um, key points. Uh, okay, I'll just get into it. The U.S. Department of Treasury on Monday sanctioned the popular cryptocurrency mixer Tornado Cash, banning Americans from using a service that the government said launders the proceeds of cyber crimes. Um, despite public assurances otherwise, Tornado Cash has repeatedly failed to impose effective controls designed to stop it from laundering funds for malicious cyber to actors on a regular basis and without basic measures to address its risks. Under uh, the Under Secretary for Tre of the Treasury for Terrorism and Financial Intelligence, Brian Nelson said. Okay, so he said, despite public assurances otherwise, Tornado Cash has repeatedly failed to impose effective controls designed to stop it from laundering funds for malicious cyber actors on a regular basis and without basic measures to address its risks. So they're saying that they Tornado Cash has failed to impose. Well, they're acting like Tornado Cash is a company. Tornado Cash is open source software. That's all it is. It's a tool and it's open source. Somebody wrote it, put it out there. It's decentralized. It's not, you know, it's it's maintained by the community. So there is they're acting. It's this just the verbiage of it. Tornado Cash has repeatedly failed to impose effective controls designed to stop it. It is a tool out there, free for use. It's like if somebody leaves a, a hammer in the park, you know, <laughs> and some kids want to build a ramp with it. You know, oh, that ramp is illegal in that park. You know, you can't build that ramp in that park. They use that hammer to do that. Let's ban all hammers. You know, so <laughs> anyway, yeah, you know. So I don't know. It's just one of those things. It, it's kind of even goes to the gun debate, you know, like what it's a tool, you know, so I don't know. It's just I don't know. Anyway, crypto mix. I don't want to get into that. That's going to open up a can of worms. Anyway, crypto asset mixers are designed to obscure trails of funds by blending someone's tokens with a pool of individual use individuals assets on the platform. They go beyond traditional crypto platforms in further concealing the identity of the people involved in transactions. While Tornado Cash is used by some people as a legitimate way to protect their privacy, the government says it fosters illicit activity, including facilitation of heights, ransomware schemes, fraud, and other cyber crimes. Virtual currency mixers that assist criminals are a threat to U.S. national security, the Treasury Department says. What's this guy's title? The Undersecretary of the Treasury for Terrorism. What is an undersecretary? I... I I don't know this stuff, man. Like, who are these people and how did they get these titles and blah, you know? I don't know. <laughs> Undersecretary of the Treasury for Terrorism and Financial Intelligence. Okay. All right, dude. Um, anyway, so um, let's see. Tornado was used in some high-profile crypto heists this year, including the $615 million theft of tokens from Ronin. Um that Ronin is the blockchain that supports Ax Axie Infinity. Um, let's see here, it, which is, you know, play to earn gaming's, you know, all the rage right now, you know, and uh, yeah, I don't even want to get into what, you know, Minecraft is, is banning blockchain. So I, that's a whole other episode itself, which I do want to talk about. Anyway, <laughs> it's 
squirrel. <laughs> I'm getting sidetracked. Blockchain analytics firm Elliptic found at least 1.5 billion in proceeds from crimes such as ransomware hacks and fraud have been laundered through Tornado Cash. The entirety of the $100 million stole from the Harmony Bridge in June was laundered through the service. Um, the U.S. Treasury quoted a much higher figure for tornado, tornado Cash. Of course they did. And said it's been used to launder more than $7 billion worth of cryptocurrency since it launched in 2019. That figure refers to the total value of crypto assets that have been sent through Tornado Cash. Um, ah, okay. All right, so let's see here. Um, the Office of Foreign Assets Control, a watchdog falling under Treasury's purview, has added Tornado Cash and its associated crypto wallet addresses to its specially designated nationals list what is that man so any person interacting with these wallet addresses could now face penalties a cause of concern for some crypto holders with honest intentions i am a crypto holder with honest intentions i mean i don't really have enough money to do anything like you know spectacular anyway but uh you know um <laughs> I wonder if I'm on this specially designated national list. I mean, this is crazy. just because I, I wake up in the morning and talk about this. <laughs> I don't know. But I've talked about Tornado Cash before, like quite often. And I talk about privacy and the need for privacy and the whole argument that, well, I'm not doing anything wrong. You know, what does it matter? You know, like <laughs> that's such an ignorant take on it you know that i'm not doing anything wrong argument you know the, everybody should be allowed to have privacy you know like what are they going to ban curtains in your bedroom at night because you know <laughs> people need to be uh, uh, scared of some possible malicious activity that could happen in your bedroom like what's next <laughs> you know like <laughs> Like they don't need to see every single financial traction you do, and it's 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 good to have these tools out there. I mean, this is that they wanted to install the Clipper chip in the '90s, and the, the cypherpunks fought hard and fast against the Clipper chip. The Clipper chip was actually being ushered in by Joe Biden, Senator Joe Biden back then, to surveil and to have a back door into every single person's computer, and it finally got shot down by by the tireless efforts of the cypherpunks. And so this is kind of, and yeah, you know, and you know, Bitcoin is a tool, you know, and there's just there's all these tools that are trying to be banned. And so anyway, uh, all U.S. Per so in quotes here, the Treasury Department says all U.S. all transactions by U.S. person or within the United States that involve any property or interest in property of designated or otherwise blocked persons are prohibited unless authorized by a general or specific license by OFAC. So. All transactions by U.S. person uh, within the United States that involve any property interest or interests of in property of designated or otherwise blocked person. So, if we associate with these blocked addresses, then wow, we, then we, then we get the black bar. This is like social credit system right here. This is the bedrock, the foundation of it. You know, like first is Tornado Cash. You know, then what is it next? It's Uniswap. That's open source code. It allows people to trade in a decentralized manner. And then MakerDAO and the DAI token. The DAI is a is a decentralized stable coin. It's one-to-one -one with the dollar, but it's backed by a bundle of assets like USDC stable coin and like uh, Ethereum and, and I think some other stuff, but um, yeah. So how? So here's here's something else they say. However, enforcing such a move may be difficult for the government and over overly restrictive, according to Coin Center, a nonprofit. Uh, focused on crypto regulation. That's because there's no single person or entity behind the use of Tornado Cash and that's an open source tool. The action appears to be sanctioning of a tool that is neutral in character and that can be put to good or bad use like any other technology. So that's interesting, but there's a little part that I did not read here that I want to get to. Um, I, I highlighted this and it says, some blockchain analytics tools have managed to demix crypto sent through Tornado to identify the source of the funds. Elliptic, the company behind it, says it was able to trace stolen crypto from Harmony to several new Ether wallets, for example. Okay, so the government's sitting here saying, you know, now that people are using the Tornado Cash to mix up some of their funds, 
And, you know, hackers have used it too. Sure. You know, just like the Silk Road, you know, and Ross Ulbricht, who's doing two life sentences right now for creating the Silk Road. And they're they're trying to say, well, you know, assassins used Silk Road. You know, and he's now complicit in, uh, you know, in helping assassins and stuff like that. I don't know what the deal is. But, you know, like, and then a lot of illegal drugs are being you know, bought and sold on the, the, the Silk Road. It was an online website that facilitated... Tra private trans transactions between individuals buying and selling whatever they wanted, um, a kind of an open market using Bitcoin. And uh, the, the, the feds raided Ross Ulbricht. Now he's serving two life sentences in prison. The guy was in college at the time, you know. Um, does he, the, the hammer came down hard on him for creating a website whenever we have <laughs> a lot worse criminals out on the street, you know. So anyway, just saying. Um, so that was a tool. Silk Road was a tool. Tornado Cash is a tool. You know, it's open source. You can't shut down Tornado Cash. But um, they could. They could. The government can trace and track any of this this stuff that they want. Pretty much, in my opinion. Some people, maybe not Monero. You know, um, I do believe there's a bounty out there um, by the IRS or, or or one of those government agencies. To, for somebody to be able to uh, decrypt Monero and, and transactions on Monero. Uh, I don't think that bounty has been fulfilled yet. Um, but, uh, but either way, the government has lots of amazing tools for chain analysis. So if they really wanted to catch criminals, they could probably catch criminals. Um, so anyway, so yeah, some blockchain analytics tools have managed to demix crypto sent through Tornado to identify the source of the funds. Elliptic says it was able to trace crypto stolen from Harmony uh, to several other walls, for example. So let me go over here to this post that I found on LinkedIn. Um, so here's the elliptic.co on their blog. But I want to go to this, this LinkedIn post first. Okay, so Tom Robinson, the chief scientist and co-founder at Elliptic, he says, an interesting development, and this is this is kind of an old post, you know, but uh, I wanted the right context to talk about it. And now that the, the United States government has banned Tornado Cash, this is the perfect time to talk about this post. So he says, in the, he says in, this is a month ago, an interesting development in the $100 million Horizon Bridge hack case with the exploiter themselves being exploited. You see, like people think that all people people do is is, is use these types of tools for for malicious activity. You can use this activity for good, and you know that it just goes to show that things can backfire on the hackers as well, and that it's just technology out there. That's it. Uh, so all the, the technology is not taking sides. So. Anyway, all the stolen Ethereum-based assets have now been passed through Tornado Cash. And this is when the, the Harmony hack was going on. Uh, it is ongoing. So in what looked like a series of... So all the stolen Ethereum-based funds have now been passed through Tornado Cash in what looked like a series of automated transactions. However, the thief has been overcharged by more than $650,000 in fees to do so. Some of the Tornado Cash relayers who help facilitate the mixing process. Um, so in order to run some type of uh, transaction network, a consensus net mechanism and stuff like that, you have to have nodes or relayers. And uh, you know, people who run these nodes, they get rewards in the form of whatever crypto um, uh, that that platform runs on. So like Ethereum um, validators, they receive, you know, the Ethereum coin token. Yeah. So tornado cash relayers, they receive the tornado cash for, for um, doing transactions. Right. So the, the transaction fees, that's where it comes from. Right. So anyway, that's how people, that's how decentralized networks stay alive because all the people in these random locations all around the world if you take the effort and you run that software or you use your computer to, to use it as a node for that network, you will be rewarded for it. You'll be rewarded in the form of that cryptocurrency on whatever consensus network or blockchain is being run. So if you run a Bitcoin um, mining network, you're contributing to the security of the uh, a Bitcoin mining node. You're, you're, ah, you can run an... Ah. Anyway... If you are mining Bitcoin, you're contributing to the security of the network and you'll receive Bitcoin as a reward. Same thing with Ethereum and same thing in proof of stake systems too. If you run validator nodes, you'll be rewarded with the, that token of that blockchain. Anyway, so sorry. 
so back to this post. However, the thief has been overcharged by more than 650,000 fees in order to do so, um, to, to, to do these transactions through the Tornado Cash um, mixer network. So some of the Tornado Cash relayers who help facilitate the mixing process appear to have seen the ongoing automated laundering and increased their fees from less than 1% to over 99%, presumably hoping the thief wouldn't notice. And it worked. So what is happening is these people running these validators or these nodes or these relayers and stuff like that on the blockchain consensus networks, they can see the transactions coming through. Kind of like Tank in the Matrix, right? You know, the Tank, the, all those numbers falling on the screens and Tank gets to watch the Matrix and looking for the glitches in the Matrix or whatever. I, I mean, it's not just like that. That's obviously dramatized. But... You know, these, these relayers can see transactions coming through, sitting in the meme pool and all that stuff. And the meme pool is kind of like the lobby or the waiting area before the transaction gets to go through. And uh, so anyway, yeah. So the, the relayers saw these transactions coming through. And um, so what they did is they increased their fees. Usually it's around less than 1%. It's really cheap to do this stuff. Um, but they increased it to over 99%, hoping that the thief wouldn't notice. And it worked. And in some transactions, the thief would thief withdrew $100,000 uh, in Ethereum from Tornado Cash, but was charged a fee of 99000 to do it. <laughs> so, I mean... If that's really the case and that happened, I mean, that's that's pretty amazing. You know, that that's a great way to kind of uh, lash back at the thief, you know, at the hacker to, to fight back. It, it's it's using a tool against itself. It's kind of like the principles of Aikido, you know, the martial art. You use your opponent's strength against themselves. So if they're 10 times bigger than you and they're coming at you, all you have to do is rechannel that energy coming at you and then direct it right back at your opponent. That's exactly what happened here. Um, although uh, there is an, has been an update as Dmitry Starigin um, and a bunch of uh, letters for his title, whatever, and Jim Richards mentioned in the comment below, this activity could also represent the thief's the thieves and relayers actively collaborating to launder the funds. So I, I don't know, man, what, whatever it could be. And it's kind of like a glass half empty, half full type of take on it. But um, I think it's interesting to know. He said, Dimitri says, does it mean that the relayers knowingly took advantage of the stolen funds and facilitated the laundering? I mean, maybe the relayers were kind of like, uh, you know, rubbing elbows with the actual hackers and they kind of gave, the hackers gave the, the relayers a heads up and then, then Tom Robinson, the author, um, and the chief scientist at Elliptic said, interesting question. And uh, David Galindo said, yes, I was wondering the same. One thing is to claim I didn't know I was contributing to laundering. I treat all transactions the same. But if you discriminate between transactions, then that claim is way less credible. Um, so Dimitri again said, Tom, I have more than I, I have one more than uh, less than 0.1% to over 99%, presumably hoping that the thief wouldn't notice. Is there a chance that the thief had been in connection with the relayers or being part uh, being part one of the relayers himself and knowing the date and time of the transactions could have just sent some funds uh, this way, increasing the commission. So maybe th the hacker itself was one of the relayers and was using the transaction fees as a way to, to launder money as well and to earn more money. <laughs> uh, and uh, um, Dimitri replied to David saying, yes, that's a whole different story. If someone figured out that the funds were stolen and just took advantage of the moment, probably at that point, making himself a part of the laundering process. And then Tom, the chief scientist of Elliptic says, Dimitri, yes, it's possible, but why do that rather than just send the funds to them directly? The relayers sent fees straight back into Tornado Cash, by the way. So we don't know what happened, but basically the relayer, the person working on the Tornado Cash network, charged that, that hacker and that thief a huge fee and uh, therefore kind of probably pissed in the in the thieves Wheaties, you know, uh, rained on that thieves parade. And then the re the, the people would say, well, you know, the relayer could be in on it, too. But that relayer sent the fees straight back into Tornado Cash. Um, I don't know. 
So Dimitri says, Tom, I would say the further this way, further legitimizing the funds would be much faster through any exchange. Transaction commission as SOF would not raise any questions. Could be a payment to the team members who participated in the hack. They were just given the transaction details, exact date and time. Anyway, uh, all that is interesting type of stuff to speculate on. I will link this post in the description, in the video description, for you to, 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 to look at it yourself. I want to go look at one more take on this as decrypt. Um, dot co's take they're a good um you know DeFi media crypto media um of course they're going to take like cnbc they just didn't really care too much about it they're just kind of just you know taking the, the the standard mainstream media take let's go over here to decrypt and uh see their take uh, crypto leaders decry tyranny of tornado cash ban just the title says it shows where they stand on it <laughs> so anyway crypto industry leaders are a buzz of the bombshell announcement that the u.s treasury department has banned american citizens from using ethereum coin mixer tornado cash tornado cash is a service that allows users to make transactions on the ethereum network more private by pooling together large numbers of transactions and mixing them in a manner that prevents their tracking on the blockchain the tornado cash website was unreal reachable as of this writing and this writing was 18 hours ago um so um, and 19 hours ago now um, to some the u.s government's actions on monday strike at the core of crypto's ethos as a decentralized financial system that should protect the privacy of all users um and in quotes uh, preston van loon ethereum core developer says i don't think it was appropriate at all tornado cash is a tool like any other that can be used for bad or good um, Tornado Cash's founder, Roman Semenov, um, alleged on Twitter that his GitHub account was suspended following the federal government's blacklist announcement this morning. GitHub is the code hosting platform on which Tornado Cash is built. So Roman says, my GitHub account was just suspended. Is writing an open source code illegal now? That is one of the main things here and this is this is free speech you know this is first amendment so eric Voorhees, a prominent crypto startup founder and a shapeshift exchange as well uh, and shapeshift dow now because the exchange went from exchange company to a dow uh, and one of bitcoin's earliest advocates condemned not just the announcement but bit github itself for enforcing the tyranny of the u.s government's sanctions list um, so yeah, GitHub uh, kind of got coerced by the government into having to shut down Roman Semenov's um, GitHub account, basically. And uh, yeah, Eric Voorhees is condemning GitHub as well. And that makes a case for a more decentralized service like GitHub. So yeah, it just shows GitHub's in the, in the pockets of the government as well. So surveil and Voorhees says, surveillance of everything in control of everyone. And this is him sarcastically musing about the development. That's what makes America great. <laughs> yeah. So law abiding Americans are the only ones hurt by this. He added in another tweet. Um, so yeah, you know, the only people that actually get hurt by this are not the thieves and not the hackers. They will go use other, um, uh, other types of programs. Cause there are a lot of programs. They will continue to fork this tornado cash program they will create other versions of it, other instances of it other similar types of programs you know there, there's mixers on all types of of platforms in blockchains so anyway law-abiding americans are the only ones hurt by this so air force he, Voorhees says in a tweet i'm sure the bad guys will stop using tornado cash because it's illegal right <laughs> yeah so just like just like they don't use illegal weapons, smuggle illegal drugs, or illegally launder money through every means they can find, law-abiding citizens are the only ones hurt by this. So others claim the sanctions were unlawful, citing numerous federal court cases that have previously established free code, source code as speech, right? So after OFAC, so Kurt Opsal of Zcon and B-Sides says, after OFAC, um, uh, added the tornado cash mixer start smart contract to the specially designated national list you're on my list buddy um, its source code disappeared from github right so some argued that the ease with which github was able to lock users like Seminov out of their code reveals the need for internet building tools to be further decentralized and here's another tweet time for a decentralized censorship resistant github i agree um the Treasury Just Department justified its tornado cash sanctioning by citing the services used by multiple bad actors, including North Korean state-sponsored hacking organization Lazarus Group and the criminals that stole $7.8 million during last week's Nomad Bridge hack. Um, 
to some industry experts, today's ban on tornado cash won't prevent criminal entities from laundering illegally acquired funds. Users, in quotes here, um, Matthew Green says, users um, will create new instances of the tornado contract or other similar forks, said John Hopkins professor Matthew Green, an expert in cryptography. Treasury will then have to sanction those new addresses in a whack-a-mole style, you know, just like that little game where the mole comes up, you know. Uh, I, was, I was never good at that game. And um, yeah, so <laughs> in short, Matthew Green says, I expect that a straightforward response to tornado sanctions will see users new instances, will see, yeah, users new instances of the tornado contract or other similar forks. Treasury will then have to sanction those new addresses whack-a-mole style. Um, so to, to Matthew Green, the federal government strategy is unsustainable and ultimately harmful to users' privacy rights. Um, and for the record, he says, I'm not in favor of North Korea laundering stolen money. Right? And I don't think any of us are, right? Said Green. But I'm also not in favor of governments stepping in and smashing every service that lets users shield their transaction history from being read by the whole world. You know, because that transparency is good. That's what makes blockchain special is that you can see every transaction on there. And nothing, everything is in the light. Nothing is hidden. Anyway, so there's some takes on everything that's going on. Um, I just want to go over here to this Elliptic Connect um, website here. Um, so, yeah, Elliptic is is that company that is able to trace that stuff. So there, the government is trying to say that this software, like Tornado Cash, is out there and it's causing problems and they can't keep up. They have companies like Elliptic that could help them out. You know, they have Chainalysis. I think it's bullcrap that they can't trace all the North Korea type of activity. Um, and I think that they're just using Tornado Cash as um, kind of a scapegoat to shut down people's privacy and shut down people's free speech because open source code is free speech. And uh, yeah, so yeah, Elliptic right here. You know, so Elliptic has used this tornado demixing capa capability to trace all the stolen funds through Tornado and onwards to other wallets. Users of Elliptic solutions can now screen wallets and transactions for links to the stolen funds, even those that pass through Tornado. So the tools are out there. The government can't say that Tornado Cash is pulling the wool over their eyes. They have the tools to fight back if they want to. So, <laughs> yeah. I don't know, dude. Uh, Elliptic has used this Tornado demixing techniques to trace the stolen funds through Tornado Cash to a number of new Ethereum wallets. Yeah, so... Um, as of July, as of 13th of July, none of the stolen funds sent through tornadoes moved any further. That was back then. Okay, so, and then they map out here, you know, where all the funds have gone. I don't know. So that's my take on it. I got to go to work now. Um, I, I did go back to my old job. So um, I work, I have to drive down there less. I've renegotiated my pay with him. And it still gives me time to do all the Dow work and all that type of stuff that I love doing and to do this show that I love doing so much as well. So, hey, win-win, right? Um, so, all right. Uh, that being said, you all have a good day. Um, try to get outside and get some sun. Uh, get in that good old vitamin D. And uh, be nice to people and don't be an internet troll. You know, don't be mean to people on the internet just because you don't see them face to face. Treat everybody on the internet as if they were right there standing in front of you talking to you. All right. That just, it's such a basic thing, you know, but uh, <laughs> people forget it. All right, man. Uh, I will talk to you all whenever I get around to talking to y'all. All right. Hit me up in my DMs. Give me a thumbs up and a like. I'm so close to that thousand subscribers on YouTube. I can just taste it. All right. Later. There we go. Ah, hold on. Let me hit the outro. Oh, come on now. Well, shoot. Thank you for making it to the end of this program. If you actually like this content, give a thumbs up. And if you want to hear more, just hit the subscribe button. 
I'm available on YouTube, Odyssey, and BitChute, and on all the major podcasting platforms in audio version. Spotify specifically, if you would like to follow and leave a review, that would help a lot. I am also available on Twitter at EurekaJohn1. That's E-U-R-E-K-A John, J-O-H-N, and the number one. My DMs are always open. Feel free to shoot me a message. Thanks again.